things out there, and uh, that's pretty much it. You know, it's pretty similar to what we what I did up in New Hampshire, so I think that'll definitely help out. Is it, is it weird to sort of turn the switch from, from fan to now being a player on the team? Yeah, it is, but at the end of the day, it's still football, so going out there and playing. What was life like in the 700 level? Uh, it was, I, got, I have some good stories up there. <laughs> none, none that I can repeat, but uh, it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. What's it like to have followed the team you know, growing up and now I realize you're doing it Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Um, I always said I wanted to play for the Eagles. Um, I always said I wanted to play in the NFL. And now that it finally happened, it, it's a pretty unbelievable feeling. You know, a lot of hard work has gone into it, and uh, now that it's, it's all paid off, it, it's very rewarding. What do you remember about that week in Jacksonville? Uh, it was just a blast. It was a blast. Um, no, they lost. I was bummed about that, but it was just a crazy experience. You know, not a lot of kids get to go to the Super Bowl. I was fortunate enough that my dad, uh, my dad took me, and it was it was a great weekend. A weekend I'll never forget. Do you have brothers and sisters? Or, uh... I do. I have a sister. Uh, um, she was an athlete too, Division One gymnast for University of Denver. Um, she's a huge sports fan. Probably the craziest. Um, Sports fan I know out of any woman I know. Did she get to fight in the 700 level? <laughs> I didn't personally no, no. Oh, my sister, no. She was, I don't, actually, I don't think she was, uh, she even went. Because that, that was back in the time when we only had two tickets. It was just me and my dad. It was a, you know, it was a father-son thing. Do you, know, do you know much about Chip Kelly? I mean, the New Hampshire roots. I mean, when you were in school, talked about it. Or had you had him before? Yeah, um, Coach Mack up at school, um, they keep in contact a lot. Um, that was one thing, you know, uh, Coach Mag used to say, you know, I just talked to uh, Coach Kelly and stuff. Um, Coach Kelly came back quite a few times. Uh, he talked to our team a few times, you know, spread a message, uh, give him some words of wisdom. What were some of his messages when he came to visit anything you know, that stick with you? I, won't, I remember one, one specifically. Uh, unfortunately, when he came back uh, my junior year, I was hurt. I wasn't playing. But he's talking about practice and, like, practice habits. And, you know, you put and you wear that backpack in each rep. You do. You put that in your backpack for like the games, so you can take that out. And each rep you do during practice um, reflects on each rep uh, during games. Play tempo up there. I'm sorry. What was that? They play tempo up. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We we went on no huddle. Uh, huddle. Um, we had our tempo plays, uh, fast pace. That was pretty. It's pretty fun. We scored a lot of points. <laughs> Um, definitely a system. When I was talking uh, to the coaches and Coach Salem, um, it was the learning curve wouldn't be as great for me. And when I made the decision, that was pretty much a, the main factor. Uh, you know, I'm pretty familiar with the system, um, you know, the zone scheme and all that. And I think that if there's one scheme that'll help me succeed in the NFL, it's definitely it's definitely this one. A lot of guys who the offensive line. It is, but no matter where you play at in college, you know, I play at FCS. This is the NFL now, so everything's faster. So that's still going to be an adjustment no matter how fast we played up at school. What's your goal? What's your, you know, where you want to be in six months, two years? You know, I, w I want to be playing. You know, I want to uh, be a major contributor to the team. Um, you know, 53 men roster would be great. Um, but anyway, if it's practice squad, you know, any way I can help uh, contribute to the team, that's, that's my goal. Just go out there and show that I belong here. Um, just go out there, play every rep like it's my last, and you know, just give it 100%. In terms of center guard, what's your flexibility? Uh, I, I can do both. Um, during uh, um, college, I only played center. Uh, I played a little bit in high school, but I think it would be a little easier transition going from center to guard than like guard to tackle or something. So I think it's definitely something I'm capable of doing. How big do you expect to be being the only center here in camp? Uh, it's you know it's just it means more reps, so you know, I gotta embrace it um, and just just attack it. You know it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, pretty grueling, but just the more reps I get, the better off I'll be. A couple more for Mike. Do you think do you think your dad will will buy you those tickets if you have to play for somebody else? Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> yeah, What's yeah. What's his name? Uh, Silvio. L S I L. V I O. Hmm. How many other teams uh, were talking to you? Uh, the Falcons and Raiders were the two other teams that uh, made a hard push. I was also talking to, I talked to, I believe it was 11 teams leading up to the draft, the two weeks. Thanks, guys. Cool. All right, thank you.
Um, maybe a little bit, but um, I know when I visited here, um, I felt like I did a good job of impressing them, and I felt comfortable with the coaches. And um, you know, I think they saw that I fit really well into their scheme. And um, just with our last pick, I think that's what they decided that I could be a contributor to this team. What's the transition to Gas and Tate? I mean, how long is that going to be? It's definitely a little bit different. Um, we did a little bit of um, kind of a base three four at Boston College, just um, you know, here and there. Um, there, there's definitely some differences to it, um, some stuff I got to get used to, but I, I, th I think it'll be a decently smooth transition. It, you know, it's a position that I project well to, with, you know, with my size. So I think I think I was going to play in a three-four no matter what, and I'm excited to play in this one. Chip was talking to us about your uh, athletic numbers, uh, the, the vertical, the four-eight, forty. Do have you always been really athletic for your size? Um, yeah, I, I'd say I've been pretty decently athletic for my size, and then just being able to. Um, this winter train and all that stuff, I think, made that even better. Did you feel like you were playing in a scheme that wasn't maybe uh, tailored perfect for you? I, I mean, I wouldn't say that. Just w when you're going into college, you don't have you know as much knowledge of that. And plus, we had a coaching turnover. So um, I think I definitely project better you know, as a 3-4 end. But in, in college, and especially because, like I said, we did some 3-4, and then we had a bunch of different blitz packages where I, I – you know, I rushed from a you know a wide nine to a three technique to a nose all over the place. So I played a little bit of everything. How well do you know some of the BC guys in the building, Ryan Day, Bill McGovern? I yeah, know. yeah, I know them pretty well. Um, Coach Day was our offensive coordinator up till last year. Um, Coach McGovern was my defensive coordinator freshman sophomore year, and then Coach Dawson was uh, assistant D line coach my freshman year. So I know them all pretty well. Ryan, what have your early impressions been of working with Jerry Evans? He's great. You know, you, you can tell just how much he knows. Um, every, everyone that I've talked to has a lot of respect for him as a coach. Um, he, j he just brings a wealth of knowledge, and I, you know, I look forward to continuing to work with him. How many visits did you have during the trip here in Boston? Um, just here was my only visit, and then I worked out in uh, New England. Do you read that Chip does things differently, and the scouts here do things a little differently in terms of you know, checking things out, like I mean, there's been stuff about measuring like knee size and all this. Was it different when, when you went through it with the Eagles versus anybody else you met with at the combine or other places? Yeah, a little bit. They did some of that stuff, measuring knee and wrist and stuff like that. And then just some when I was visiting here, did some different flexibility tests. But you can tell they're, you know, over the sports science division over here, they're they're really in tune with kind of the technology of what, what goes into making somebody a good player. How much weight um, do they say you can put on your frame? Um, probably 15 to 20 pounds more, I would say. So what are you now? I'm 300 now. Was that the main reason for the knee and the, the wrist measurements? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you'd have to ask them. I don't, I don't know that much into it, but I, it's something like that, yeah. How do you think your, your size helps you as a, as a two gapper? I think most of my length, um, arm length, just being able to get players away from me and then being able to get rid of them. I think they, they look for guys that have not only tall but longer arms so you can extend well. Uh, I actually hit it in in high school, like end of my freshman year. So like beginning of my freshman year of high school, I think I was five eleven, and then by the next year I was six four, and then the next year I was six seven. So it was all in the span of about two years. Have you seen Frank Mays yet? Yeah, 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 yeah. Who's taller? Uh, I'm not sure. It's probably pretty close. Were you pushed toward uh, hoops at all, or? No, like I said, I wasn't always that tall growing up, and I actually played hockey when I was younger. Our, our family was a hockey family. My brother played um, college hockey at Colgate, so we, that was always our winter sport in our house. Any other questions, guys? Thank you. Great. Thanks. 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 transferred uh, it didn't really work out like you hoped I'm guessing uh, why do you think that was well it was the little things you know things happen and uh, you can't just you know sit down and pout about it you just got to keep it moving and that's what I did
there was an academic issue, but you were a graduate student. Were they holding you to a different standard than? Well, of course, you know, I was in graduate school. You know, it's a lot tougher than some of the uh, classes the other guys were taking. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, that's what that's what happened, and I just dealt with it. Now, the Eagles drafted uh, in, in your dad was is that right? Yeah. In in seventy uh, nine. Uh, like I I don't know the exact year, but it was during the seventies. What What did you learn from him about that whole experience? And uh. Well, I mean, he was excited, you know, to be drafted to the uh, to an NFL program, you know, for any for anybody at that matter to get drafted somewhere, you know, that's that's exceptional, you know. It's and and you know the family's going to be happy, you know, and and my father was, and uh, he had his term here, and you know. How do, how do you react to you, you getting signed by the Eagles? Oh, he was elated, you know. He was uh, he was happy. Uh, surprised, you know, because at this time I could have went somewhere, you know, beside, other than the Eagles. But, uh, you know, it was close to home, you know, and f I have a lot of family here, so I figured why not. A year ago when you were in Miami, I believe you had said that you had like a mid-round grade. How disappointing was it to transfer to try to raise that grade and then end up undrafted? Well, it's disappointing, you know, obviously. But, you know, like I said, things happen. And, you know, you can't just pout. You can't, you know, get under the bus. You can't blame anybody but yourself. And that's what I did. I, you know, I, I, I did some things. You know, I messed up, and uh, I'm, I dealt with it. But, you know, I have an opportunity here, and I'm going to run with it. How good is I mean, they didn't draft any offensive linemen. I'm sure you noticed that. Yeah. yeah, well, it could be a blessing in disguise. How aware were you of that and as, as you were making your decision where to sign that they did not draft an well, uh, talking with uh, Coach Stalin, you know, he uh, told me, you know, you're the one guy that we want here. You know, we didn't draft any linemen, so you got to make a name for yourself, and you got to put in the, the time and the effort in the in the weight room, in the film room, and show that you want to be here. And that's as, what I'm going to do. As a freshman at Miami, how well did you know Stalin? Uh, very well. Uh, you know, Philly guy, uh, the the Italian, you know, bloodline, uh, fiery dude. Uh, he expects a lot out of, his, out of his players, not just his first-round talent, you know, everybody. And, uh, you know, I respect him a lot, and he's a good person. Have you spoken to him at all at any point after he left Miami? Uh, it was at one point he, uh, he called uh, all of us, you know, all the guys he recruited, and, you know, he just let us know that he wasn't going to be a part of uh, the team anymore. And, you know, for his reasons, you know, and we could understand that. So... You know, we said our goodbyes, and that was it. So he was your position coach. Did he recruit you as, as well? He did. He did. Okay. Yeah. What did you play, guard, tackle? I mean, how are your reps split up, and what do you think you're going to be looking Today? at Today? Uh, both in college, and now what do you think you're being looking well, at? Well, in college, um, I played all four positions. Um, at UCLA, I played two positions. Um, here, you know, obviously, Co you know, Coach Stalin talks about being flexible, you know, being able to play multiple positions. And uh, right now I'm at right tackle, but you know he brings it up to me every day. You know, be ready for guard, left guard, or right guard. So I just gotta be mentally prepared. It's uh, it's fun. It's, yeah, yeah. It's it's. I imagine you grew up a big Eagles fan, right? Oh yeah. And uh, what would it mean now that you're here, you're in the building? What would it mean for you to, you know, be able to make this team, whether it's practice squad or even the 53 man roster? Don't take nothing for granted. You know, just uh, put all your effort out into anything that comes across your table. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a blessing, you know. Who were your, who were your favorite Eagles growing up? Trey Thomas, Brian Dawkins, uh, Hugh Douglas, you know, the D lineman, uh, Trotter. Did you go to games or, or was it just watching them? Uh, I went to a couple of games, but uh, not a lot. But. Last couple from up. What, what do you think are your your strengths as a as a player right now, and what do you need to work on? Uh, well, first I need to get in shape, but uh, my strengths I'm a physical physical player. I uh, love being physical. Uh, my footwork uh, is is good, but uh, it starts it all starts with being in shape. You know, you can't you can't go anywhere if you you know dogging it and you know you're not in shape, you're sweating. You know, 
you're not making good plays because you're tired. So I know I got to be in shape. I got to be at the right weight. And uh... thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Frustrating was the whole process of putting up these numbers and, and not getting, not getting the, the notoriety that some other people were getting, and, and the invitations and the opportunities. Um, to me, it wasn't you know a frustrating feeling. It was a more of a, you know, I have a lot still to prove. You know, even though the numbers I had, you know, the records I broke and stuff like that, I still got a lot of work to do. So you know, I had to prove it on another level, and that's why I'm here. And I'm ready, and I'm, you know, preparing myself for a fight, and you know, let my play do the talking, and not my numbers. What was the Eagles' interest in you leading up to the uh, the pre-draft process? Uh, well, um, the Eagles came to my school during the season. Um, you know, they talked to me. Um, you know, they came to my pro day. I came for a local visit. Um, so they were they were pretty in the buzz for a long time. So. I saw Jordan Matthews, I think, tweeted at you uh, right before you signed. What, what's your relationship with him? How do you know him? Well, I actually don't know him too well. But, you know, once I saw it, that's when it seeped in and I knew it was real. And I, I was so ecstatic at, you know, at the time I was, I was happy, but I'm still trying to, like, pinch myself. Is it real? And once I opened my phone and saw that he tweeted, welcome to the family, I said, all right, let's go. It's Tom. So, you know, it, it definitely made me happy, and it definitely made me feel part of the team and part of family. I know you, you know, probably kind of envisioned what today was like or the first couple of days, the fact that you're in the building, getting ready to the size. You know, what's that like versus what you thought it would be like? Um, it's a new feeling. It's, it's um, better than I thought it was. It's everything I, you know, everything I dreamed of. Um, to be here in this situation, to be here under Chip Kelly and the Eagles, it's the best feeling in the world. And going from Eagles fan growing up to now being a part of the Eagles, it's just like, wow, it's a great feeling. And I'm proud to call myself an Eagle. You played a lot of different positions at Del Val when you early on. Uh, what did that do for you? Did it just give you a good, what was the benefit of that? Um, well, you know, during my college career at Del Val University, I, you know, they had me at certain positions, and as I got older and more mature and more mentally, you know, um, st stable, um, my my position to start changing. You know, I, I gained a bigger role in the receiver um, core, and you know, it was always a process, and that's what I learned here. Here was going to be a process, so now I understand that you know you got to get ready mentally. This game is mental, so once you get that down packed. That's when you, you start to become the player that you always dreamed to be. Is it hard to turn the page from, from being a fan to being a, a player on the team? No, it's not hard at all because I have that drive, that passion, that everything that Philly is, and I'm trying to bring it to this football team. And I'm excited, and I'm going to wear that chip on my shoulder, you know, coming from a small school and, you know, being a fan to now being a player, and I'm going to give it everything I got every day. <laughs> guys in a locker room, I mean, they, they were playing in front of, you know, 70, 80, 90,000 people on Saturdays. I know you guys drew, drew pretty well for a D3 school up mm -hmm. there, but when, when you watched, you know, these guys playing in front of huge crowds and mm -hmm. bowl games and everything, did you ever kind of feel like you were missing out on something or a little envy or were you just kind of real content to be in your little spot? Well, of course, you know, you know, I always had, you know, expectations to play at those big schools. But it never happened. You know, I see it on TV and I see, you know, guys playing in front of big crowds. And I say to myself, I can be that person. And, um, you know, I'm just excited to be here. Um, I'm excited to compete. And, you know, regardless of all those, th those things, it doesn't even matter anymore because it's done. Now it's time to compete and compete against the best people in the world. So, you know, now is take full advantage of my opportunity. I'm going to do it. Last couple for you guys. I, I guess the, the quality of... Uh, you know, defensive backs on that level was up and down. Mm -hmm. um, how much of an adjustment is it going to be, you know, once you get out there and start facing these guys faster, bigger, more tired? Well, 
at the end of the day, football is football. And, you know, what we preach here is, you know, now that I've here, been here for a couple of days, technique beats talent. So once I get that technique and that mental rep all, way, all, all down pack, I'm going to adjust. And, you know, that's what I've always said to myself. I'm going to be adaptive and I'm going to adjust to my opponent, and I've done it. So, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge, but I'm, 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 I'm putting myself to the challenge and holding myself to it. It was a it was it was a blessing in disguise. Um, me and him put a lot of work in, and I've noticed over time, you can't be the player that you want to be if you don't work hard. And that's what we did. We sacrificed summers, and it was just me and him. We would be thrown in the dark, you know, outside. So you know, those are the things it took for me to you know to have the season I had and all the dedication. And it was just time for me to have a big year, and it happened my senior year. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, not yet. You know, we this was our first day in practice, and you know, right now, you know, no, no one, no one knows. You know, I can play corner, nickel, or safety. You know, that we just going to see in the next couple of days. Rangel, how would you compare this day to when you were a walk-on at Kansas State and walking onto that Manhattan campus for the first time? You know, it's you know. It's, it's the same thing. You know, I still got to have that walk-on mentality. You know, I still got to have that underdog that I got to earn it, you know, because even though I'm at a new a new organization, you know, I'm, I'm not starting right now. So, you know, I still got to earn my position. I got to earn that 53-man roster. So I think I'm just, you know, it, it stays the same. How much do you think that walk-on mentality you just described, how much do you think that helped you in Kansas State and then helped you get to this point? You know, it, it helped me from a, a, a long standpoint that, you know, everything – was not given to me. I had to earn it. So, you know, just once I did get on scholarship at Kansas State University, you know, that I earned that. You know, I just didn't get that handed out. Because the Eagles need defensive help, and they brought in a lot of defensive backs, especially through the draft. Do you feel like you could be a guy, even though you're drafting the sixth round, that could make an immediate impact here? Yeah, most definitely. You know, once I, once I just gained the coach's trust and that I can do everything, I can – make all the plays, make all the right techniques that, that they have, I'm pretty sure. Playing the Big 12 where you throw the ball all over the place, how much do you think that's helped you as you get to the next level? You know, I think it helped me a lot because obviously they, they throw the ball in the NFL. And now you got guys, quarterbacks that can throw the ball 70, 60 yards. So, you know, being in the Big 12 with straight pass, you know, that I think that won't be the issue. The issue will be more of just just coming down, tackling, and doing all the other stuff. Which position, safety or corner, are, are your skills better suited to? Mm. That's a tough question. You know, I, 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 don't, I never look at it like that. I try to look at it as I can play both being versatile. And the most I played was, was nickel at Kansas State University. So that's kind of a safety in the corner. So I, I'm in between. What did you most enjoy playing? Uh, nickel, because, you know, that was the first time I got on the field at Kansas State University. You know, that was the one um, spot that was open. And, you know, coach told me he think I should play nickel. And, you know, during that time, we had an a, a older guy. And I just watched him play the game because I, did, I didn't come out just knowing it. You know, it took me about five, five weeks to actually get everything down packed playing nickel. And once I did it, you know, at, nickel is harder than playing cornerback because you're in the middle of the field, too. So it's, it's more challenging, and I like to take the challenge. What were your responsibilities as a nickel? Did you have to cover only slot receivers? Could you cover wide receivers? Did you have to uh, support a lot in the run? In the run uh, it, was, it was a little bit of both, you know, because you like you in that middle, so you, you got to cover the slot receivers, and those are usually the fastest guys. And also, you know, sometimes they get wide receivers to switch, so sometimes I stuck the receivers, too. and. In a run game, you, you got to be a force in that run game. You know, if I'm ba I can be, I'm in the middle, being it could be eight man in the box, and you know I can c contribute to the run game. Ever against a tight end or didn't Yeah, depending on at Kansas State, it was depending on the formation. Like once, we, like we played Utah, and you, and 
Um, they was a, a formation that they wasn't a spread team. They was more of a run team, and that was me more sticking to tight end. When you first walked on, was the NFL something on your radar that you, you thought you were going to get to eventually, or were you just focused on uh, college at that time? You know, that, that came a long time ago when I was a child that I wanted to play in the NFL. You know, so when playing high school, you know, that's everybody's goal to play in the NFL. And, you know, just me taking that walk-on route, you know, that's still, you know, my job. I want to play in the NFL. So, you know, even though I took the long, the long road, you know, it came out successful. And, you know, it doesn't stop now. I, I got to start over again and hopefully, you know, have a wonderful career. When you come into the NFL, there's, you know, obviously more money, more chances of distraction, especially off it. So, you know, have you, has the team talked to you or even to this point about you know, ways to stay out of trouble, make sure your, your focus stays strictly on the field? Um, yeah, you know, at Kansas State, we got guys in the NFL already. So, you know, they called me and, you know, congratulated me. And, you know, they gave me the, the rundown on everything in the NFL, you know, how how things go, you know, how you need to save your money because, you know, it can be going so quick. You know, you never know when when, when it's going to be your last day in the NFL. When did they put you on scholarship? Um, after, my, after my red shirt sophomore year. Did, did you go there with kind of a semi-understanding that if you played well that – yeah, most definitely. You know, Coach came when he came to my high school, one of the recruits, and, you know, he just told me, you know, they they very interested in me walking on. And, you know, the main issue was just how they treat walk-ons. You know, but when I went to K-State, you know, they treated me like I was a scholarship guy. You know, nothing nothing was different. You know, just probably a couple things, and, you know, they, they welcomed me. You talk about Chip said he, he knows he's getting a, a Bill Snyder coach player. What does that mean to you? I mean, what... What did, did, did Bill Snyder give you that, 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 that's pretty unique? You know, he, hard work, you know, that's the number one thing I can say about Bill Snyder. Because at Kansas State University, we don't get the five-star, four-star recruits. We get the three-star, two-star walk-ons. So we got to work hard like an Alabama team or uh, Ohio State. We got to work hard like them just so we can be successful in the Big 12. And it went a, a long way in our career because we had a lot of walk-ons that just came out this senior year, and we had a successful career from 2010. Last so you for those like nickel situations that you do get attention in the press coverage of why you like you should get the job in the field? Yeah. The yeah, most definitely. You know, just depending on our schemes for the game, we did play press, you know, but for the most part, you know, we at Kansas State, we breed on not giving up the deep balls, and that's mainly why we was an all team because, we, you know, we don't want to give up deep balls. You know, you can – you can give up the two, three, five yards, but you know the deep balls is what to put you out the game. On, on Saturday, you said you, you planned on, on calling Sproles or texting Sproles. Have you spoken to him yet? Yes, I did. You know, I, I talked to him in the, when I got here yesterday. You know, he definitely welcomed me in and you know took me in as a brother. And you know, I'm I'm very excited that I got someone who played at Kansas State because you know if I ever need anything, you know I'm sure he'll be there to help. Okay, thanks guys. We're gonna keep it rolling here. Thank you very much. Well, I played punt return in high school, but I never returned in college. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to help the guys, you know, get on the field, however it's going to happen. You know, I thought there were other guys that could have probably played the position, you know, but coach felt like he wanted to give me the responsibility of being the returner. So the conversation was kind of jokey back and forth, but I knew push came to shove. If it was something that we needed to, for me to do to win the game, I was going to do it. He said they always trusted you with whatever they needed done. I, I, I think that comes from, you know, just um, hard work and, you know, commitment. Uh, I've always committed to, you know, the, the team and the organization and, you know, doing things the right way. So when I did that, it just came down to, you know, crunch time, you know, give me a shot. It's not always the case that rookies can come in here, whether you're a first-round pick or seventh-round pick, to come in and make an immediate impact. But in this situation and for yourself, do you feel like you're able to come in here and make an impact here in this offense right away in week one? 
that's not the conversation right now. The conversation is about me getting better. You know, today was a great day. You know, got out there, you know, kind of understood a little bit more the, the NFL speed, you know, put some things on film to learn from. You know, when week one comes, I think that'll be an easier conversation for us to have. But right now, it's all about me trying to find myself. But that has to be your mentality, though, that I can, I can make an impact, whether, you know, right away, right? And My mentality is to progress. I want to be a better player today. I want to be a better player tomorrow. I'm not worried about, you know, saying that I'm the guy right now. I'm about getting better every day. And I let the chips fall where they may from there. I think you were the third first round pick to sign. Is that a priority for you to sign quickly? It didn't matter to me. I think it's something the organization wanted to do, and you know, I'm here to do, you know, do right by my organization. How much did you play inside the slot? Uh, would you say uh, that you missed it? Uh, my last year, I played a lot. Uh, traditionally, my first two years, I played outside. I was an X and a Z. My last year, we kind of went into more of an up tempo, no huddle offense with a. Uh, with Steve Sarkeesian, yeah. and what we did is kind of almost what most of the Pac-12 teams do nowadays, uh, a lot like what Coach Kelly does here. What, why, meaning, why were you more suited for the yeah. slot when you went to no huddle up tempo? Uh, it's easier. It's easier to move around. Mm -hmm. It's easier to get your most developed player, you know, in positions to give him the ball. So, you, so you had basically you had to know every everything. And that's yeah. What ship required Conce conceptually, you had to have an understanding of what was going on. You had to also put yourself in a position to be successful. So you start inside, you know, now you have a concept where you need to be the X receiver. You can go over to the left side and tell the X, you know, you run this in the slot and put yourself in a position to play outside. Do you have a preference uh, on, or, or do you feel like you're better at one or the other? In college, I kind of wanted to go wherever the ball was going to go. <laughs> yeah. You've been compared a lot to Jeremy Macklin. Have you followed his career and how he played? Do you get a chance to watch him a lot here? Uh, I have kind of an understanding of the kind of player he was. He definitely had a great career here, and I'm aware of you know the things he does. You know, I think we're two different people because you know I have not played in the NFL yet. He's already proven himself. I'm here to just develop and then get an opportunity to play the game. I understand you're friends with Jabari Parker. Is that true? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so, can't believe everything. When you weighed in today, how much, how much did you weigh? And do you know if they want to add any weight to you? And, and how much can you put on that frame of yours? I think I can put a good amount of weight on. But uh, today, you know, I weighed a little bit better because I kind of was sick about three days ago. So oh, I lost okay. a bit of weight. So, oh, okay. So you want to, but how much can, how much do you think you can max out then? Can you say a little bit? You know, that's why we got sports science people yeah. here that know <laughs> those clinics. We we'll find out. Have you, have you actually got a chance to look at the, the playbook? Have they given you a lot? Yeah, we're, you know, we're just day by day, we're yeah. just trying to learn more. How unique is that? I mean, so you said some of what you did at USC was comparable, but looking at what you've gotten so far, is it? Special. You know, it's about getting the guys the ball in space and also getting guys to not have to think so much so they can play faster. When you look at this young receiving core here, you know, with you and Jordan, Josh, I mean, this, this could be a dynamic receiving group for a long time. Do you look at this group and say, wow, we, we might be able to do something special here? I think we're going to do something special here because of people that are already here. I mean, it starts with the coaches and then the players like you just named. Those guys love the game of football just as much as I do. And I think we're all going to push each other and we're going to try to get better. You ran, you ran, a, you ran, a, you ran a, a you know, real fast 40, obviously, but in the USC, you kind of, kind of pass it. Your yards per catch were right on 12 or something like that your senior year. Is that what they needed out of you? Did they need you to be more of that guy kind of underneath? I know you did catch a lot of deep balls, but do you feel like maybe that's part of your game that hasn't really been tapped into yet? The deep ball? Yeah. Well, I played outside early yeah. in my career, both my freshman and sophomore year. I think my yards per catch was greater than it was my junior year. I think as a junior, all I wanted to do was help us move the chains and play the game the right way. If that's what it meant for us to just walk down the field with your snag routes, your stick routes, quick slants, and those type of deals, that's what I was going to do. I mean, we don't always have to go for the whole shot every time. So I did what coaches called and, you know, wanted to be, you know, consistent. How did you end up at SC from, uh, from camp? Uh, they had two great receivers there before me, you know, Robert Woods and Marquise Lee. And I wanted to learn how to play the position, so I wanted to compete against those two guys. Why so, SC over Oregon? Or was it down to Oregon? I know that this. I looked. Try. I looked at Oregon. Um, I wasn't. I don't have the same relationship today with Coach Kelly as I did back then. I didn't know him as much. You know, they sent a guy to come recruit me. He was a great guy, but in terms of SC versus everybody else, I knew the body of work of those two wide receivers before me. 
especially as freshmen in the sophomore year. Uh, Robert's sophomore year was a great campaign. I thought those guys had great tools that I kind of want to add it to my game. But didn't you also know the Kiffins? Yeah, Monty Kiffin and Lane Kiffin both recruited me. You know, obviously head coach has to recruit you. But uh, those those guys did an amazing job, you know, in terms of recruitment. But you kind of got to go places, not only for coaches, but the people that you're going to go to work with. You talk a lot about your work ethic and, and, you know, starting right here right now, the playbook out there, just learning and learning and being better each day. Where did that, where does this work ethic come from? Does it come from your parents, come from your father? Where, where does it kind of come from? Many people, but it's reality. It's controllable. I mean, me, me telling you today that I want to grow every day as a football player and learn learn the offense and you learn how professionals you know prepare. Those are controllable things. It's not about me going out there and catching ten passes a game, you know, because those things I, I really can't control. So how I live is about the easy easy aspects of life. Last I mean, couple again, pronouncing again, guys. Really, there's obviously a lot more distraction with the money and everything. Um, does the team talk to you about you know ways of staying out of trouble and just making sure you're you know, not misguided. We all know that the position that a lot of us are in right now, there's been studies after studies about this. You know, we got 30 for 30s about it. You got everybody wants to give you advice. For me, it's about, you know, staying in the framework of the things I already know. I know how to be a good person. I know how to play the game of football. Worry about that. You know, I got a couple of dollars in my pocket. Hopefully, I let those, let it grow. I'm not worried about spending money. I'm worried about playing the game first. How do you feel like you did against the press man? I thought I had a game plan every time I lined up, and I was trying to get open. What was, what was your game plan when you, when you knew you were going up against a good man press corner? You know, play to his technique. Whatever he's going to do, try to counter it. That's what it is. It's like a game of chess. He's going to do something. you got to do something. And you got to eventually get open. You you mean, being in Utah, what do you recall about Will? Uh, about your third quarter? Uh, man, I can tell you better about today. You know, we went at it today. I think he's a great player, very smart, good feet for his size. And, you know, I thought to have that on film or what we just did today is great for me because there are a lot of great corners in this league with the same similar body. So he just helped me get better today. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. What's going on, man? Y'all doing all right? Yeah. All right, guys, we'll take questions for Jordan. What, what were your expectations coming into this building after a couple of days of putting on practice? You know, how has that met or maybe even seen? Yeah, um, coming into it, I knew that this place uh, demanded excellence. Um, you know, and just being here throughout my visits, throughout, you know, meetings with the, with the, the coaches, the personnel people, you know, it's – it's pretty evident, you know, being here two days. It's, it's very evident that this this place holds a high, very, very high standard. What do you know now about what they want out of their inside linebackers in this three-four scheme? Have you been able to pick up on some of that yet? Yeah, I mean, we're still in the extremely beginning stages of learning the defense. I mean, we've put in three defenses. You know, it's very, very simple at this point. Uh, they want you to be fast, be physical. Um, and understand, you know, they want you to be uh, leaders out there on on the field, and uh, you know that's that's what they expect. You talked last week about how how excited you were to get to work. What has it been like to be able to do now? Have gotten? Oh, this is what you know. You've been waiting for this for your, your entire life, and uh, through this whole process, you know, it's been about drills and you know forty and the shuttle. You know, it hasn't been about football. Um, so to get out there to be able to play. You know the sport that we all love. Um, you know you just have fun. You know it's it's fun to play this sport, and that's why we all do it. How, how did the in injuries that you had early in your college career kind of impact your, your mindset going forward? Is it, huge. Is it hard to huge. always not have that in the back of your mind? You no, no, I don't. I don't think about my injuries that not one bit. Um, for me, it's it's changed my mindset um, and the fact that it's prepared me for life. Um, you know, you realize that in one play everything could be gone. You know, so you don't take this for, for granted. You know, you, you enjoy these moments that you get, and um, but, you, but you prepare yourself for when that time does come because you never know when it does. You've been called a coach on the field a lot by a lot of people. What does that term mean to you, and why do you think people say it? You know, I just, it, it's, it's been um, instilled in me since, since the beginning. Uh, my coaches, you know, being a linebacker, that's what, that's what being a linebacker is. You have to be the quarterback on the field. 
and um, you have to you, you've got to study more. You've got to you got to know where where the uh, where the coverage is going. You got to know where the line's supposed to be. And if it's not right, you got to get it right. So for me, um, you know, I try to be as much of a leader as, as I can. You know, and, and whether that means being vocal on the on the field, you know, that's just who I am. George, you said the Eagles paid more attention to you in the pre-draft process than, than most teams. Yep. What, what was your impression after all those meetings of the Eagles, of how they do things, of the questions they asked you yeah. uh, compared to other teams that you might have Yeah. Um, Question-wise, it was pretty similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you get somebody <laughs> inviting you in a lot and, and wanting to meet with you a lot, it, it kind of raises questions in your mind, like, are they, you know, did I answer something wrong? Or, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but... You know, uh, it, it worked out for the best. You Is know, there I, anything that stood out about just this team compared to yours? The way, the way, you know, everything here has a purpose, and you could you could really see it. Um, you know, going through this entire process, people were telling me, former teammates that are in the in the league right now, were telling me, you know, it's the team that doesn't talk to you that's going to draft you. You know, everybody said. This place is different. You know, they want to they want to know who you are before they get you. They want to, you know, do their investigation and understand um, what you're about as a person. Uh, you know, both on the field and off the field. What was Chip like specifically? Was he friendly? Was he intimidating? And no, he was he was friendly. He was friendly. I, I didn't meet with him um, as much uh, personally. It was you know it was more Coach Minner. Coach Minner came out to my pro day. Coach Minner, um, you know, uh, you know I, I had meetings with him upstairs and you know, but. You know, when I was in interaction with him, it was it was he was very very cool. Do they make you aware of you know if you're to become an eagle, some of the things that they do here that's different, whether the sports science program, the training way, the practice runs around. Right? Yeah, abs- do you, absolutely. Do you know everything you're yeah, into? yeah, absolutely. Uh, you don't know what to what extent, but you understand that mm-hmm. everything has a purpose, and they're they're doing everything in their power to make you a better player. When you look at what this defense has done the last couple of years. I mean, do you think you're you're a guy, and so many guys drafted on the defensive end can come in here? you guys can make an immediate impact here in Philadelphia? For me, it's, you know, <laughs> it's about getting better. I mean, let's be real. You know, it, what, what he just said, it's, it's all about getting better. Um, you know, I've got, a, I've, I've got a great opportunity to learn from some vets who, who are established in this league, you know, people who have played, you know, for two, three, four, five, you know, plus years, you know, and who are, who are very established. And just, just having the ability to do that and learn from these guys and, um, be in a room like that is because uh, you know you don't get to see that very often. At the combine, and I think they had you at, at, at 236 pounds. Mm-hmm. Where are you now? And, and ideally, where would you like to play? I'm exactly the same. 236 pounds. Um, obviously, I want to cut down on some fat, body fat, and, and lean up. Um, but, you know, I, I haven't talked to them yet about where they want me. Um, it's usually about right though, 235, 236. So, you know, I, I, my, my focus right now is about leaning down. So this is a 6'1", 236 is, is kind of the ideal size for you? Yeah, I mean, you got to ask the sports science guys. I mean, they have a plan. Like I said, everything they have a plan for everything. So um, I'm not sure 100%. How does playing the spread offenses in the Big 12 help prepare you from a coverage standpoint? Right. The NFL? Right. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely helped me. Um, you got to learn, you know, how to, how to play man. You got to learn how to play zone, um, you know, match up. You know, you, you learn a lot of different concepts to beat those uh, high-powered offenses uh, because that's what they are. You know, they're trying to put up as many points as possible in that conference. So it's it's really helped me a lot um, learning conceptually um, and, and understanding uh, what offenses are trying to do to you. Was there one you that you against the run against that really kind of you, you thought was better than Can the you, other? Hold on, repeat that question. One I'm sorry. One team that ran a spread really stick out to you that was really tough to, to stick with? Or? I mean, you got guys like West Virginia. You got guys like Texas Tech who will never get in never get an eye backs or anything, you know, two back sets. Uh, you know, you're going you're going each week, Baylor, you know, you're going against teams that are in the spread and that are, you know, decide, running the, the quarterback to side. And, you know, you become accustomed to that. And I think it's helped. Do you think you're better against the run or, or the pass? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think I'm an athletic linebacker. Um, you know, a lot of people say I'm better against the pass, but I do think I have a lot of good good qualities going against the run. You know, I think I can dissect a, a, a play pretty quickly and um, understand where I'm supposed to fit. You know, that's what a linebacker is about, knowing where to fit, being in your gap and, and, and striking. So obviously I have things to work on, but, you know, for me, I, I try to, you know, I'm trying to get better, but, you know, I, I pride myself in both. Even though you're a pro now, how much is in a way does this feel like the first few days of college again, learning playbook, learning new teammates, learning yep. where to go? 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's a new situation. You don't know what to expect. You know, you've got a lot of anticipation coming in here. You jitters, you're you're anxious. Um, you know, you don't know what it's going to be like, and uh, that's it's exactly the same as as college, except on completely different level. You know, it's you know you didn't have this at the University of Texas day two, day one, day two. You know what I'm saying? So it's a completely different level. Um, you know, it's your dream. It's what, what we've all been working for all these years. Did the coaching changes and scheme changes at, at, at Texas, do you think that's, that's going to help you over these next few months? That definitely yeah, you? yeah, absolutely. Um, I had four and five years. You know, I've learned so many different techniques, so many, so many different schemes. You know, I've been a man, zone, you know, any, everything you could think of, I've probably done it. Um, but to some extent, you know, it's obviously here, it's the, the terminology is different and uh, you try to find the, the concepts that carry over. Um, but absolutely, it's going to help. Of absolutely. The, of, of those coordinators, which is most comparable to, to what you're doing in Philly? I was in Coach Muschamps for one year. I was freshman year? Freshman year. Um, true 3-4, you know, he was two-gap player, two-gap linebackers. Um, and, and this past year, you know, obviously, I was a freshman. I mean, I was I was young. I was everything was going quick. Um, but this pa this past year, being in pretty multiple and understanding what it truly means to be a uh, you know a linebacker in, in a con in a defense like this. Um, so I'd say this past year. Mm -hmm. Take a couple more for Jordan. What's the organization done to get you ready to be an NFL player? Both not so much even on the field, but off. What you standards you have to live to. And, yeah. And the way you have to you know maintain right. yourself. Right. Well, obviously, you know, this organization is built up with. Guys who are highly respected around around the city, around you know the country, you know, and in the locker room, off off the field, you know, it's uh, that's what you've got to that's what you got to live up to. You know, they don't bring guys around here that are um, you know going to be going to be nuisances. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, being able to to acclimate to to that culture and um, you know it's it's being a good person. You know, it's just who you are. Um, if you wouldn't be here if you weren't that type of person. Thanks, guys. Cool. Appreciate it. Thank Thank you. Corey, I know we asked you about this uh, <coughs> last week, but running the 40 uh, at your pro day, if you had that to do over again, would you do it the same way or would you set it out? I would do it the same way, uh, especially if I was still injured at the time, obviously. Um, I don't regret anything that I, any decision I made up to this point, so I would definitely do it the same way and stick with what I did. I probably actually probably wouldn't even ran at my pro day. Oh, you wouldn't have ran? Probably, then. most likely. Is this at all motivational for you that you did run? It was lower than, than expected, and you become a six round pick. I mean, do you kind of use that as motivation? Prove people wrong? I definitely use um, the round I got picked in as motivation. Um, but like I said from the beginning, that never really mattered to me. I just want the opportunity. But um, to be labeled as maybe a slower corner, I know that's not me, especially when you watch tape and, you know, playing in the Big 12 Conference. Uh, there weren't too many times that I got a deep ball completed on me. So uh, that definitely does motivate me going forward to show that that ain't the type of player that I am. Or 4-6, four, four, it's not me. On the call last week, you said the hamstring was, was torn. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling now or, or, and, and how far away are you from being completely healthy? I'm good now. good now. Yeah, today was actually the first day that I just went all out, and I felt fine out there. Obviously, there's a little discomfort still, but I mean, as far as being 100%, I think I'm pretty close, and I should be fine, especially around camp time when it comes around. Who are some of the toughest receivers you faced in college? Um, when, I first, when I first made the switch, sophomore year, uh, definitely had to be uh, Kenny Stills. That was my first start, so Kenny Stills um, had to go against Stanley Bailey, um, and then also. Going into junior senior year, uh, Tyler Lockett, Jameson Crowder. Did you ever have talks with Charlie Weiss about what the NFL is like, and did he give you any tips as to what to expect if he did get to this level? Uh, not, not too many. I never, I never really talked too much about uh, what the NFL was like. I knew that was something I wanted to do, but um, I'm all about living day by day. So, I mean, yeah, I wanted to do it. I had an idea. I probably get the opportunity, but at the time, I was worried about college, uh, helping. The Jayhawks out, Kansas University of Kansas, and then also graduating. Kansas won three, won uh, seven games <coughs> in the last three years. Jacory, how tough was that for you? Tough. It was. It was very tough, especially going in. Nobody wants to lose, and um, but I think that's why I played with such a big chip on my shoulder. 
Um, Cause I did everything I could, regardless of what was asking me, to put us in a position to win. And I'm gonna continue to do that going forward. And losing is something I, I'm tired of doing. I want to win, and I'm glad that I got the opportunity to come to an organization like this because they want to win as well. And I'm gonna do what I can to help. A situation like that is it tough to not for some guys not to quit I mean, to, to get frustrated? I mean, does it happen with players? It's definitely tough. Not for me. It's tough for guys, other guys, but me, I'm a competitor. I don't like to lose. So, yeah, if we lose the overall game, but I'm not going to lose against the guy that's lined up against me. And regardless, that's that's how I play. I mean, I don't care what the score is. I don't care if I'm going to get the first string or a fourth string because the scores ran up on us. The guy across from me is not going to beat me, and that's how I play. I represent me. I represent my name on my back, and I represent the University of Kansas. So. That's just how I've always been in life. So it really didn't matter to me if we lost one or we was losing by 40 or losing by seven. And who recruited you, Gil or, uh, or Charlie? Coach Gil. It was Coach Gil. I was with his recruiting class. Uh, Darrell Wyatt uh, started recruiting me. And then he left, went to Texas. Then Coach Beatty came in and finished it off. Is, is your game speed different than technically straight line speed? As far as like running? Like, like the speed you have in games. Is, 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 is that a different skill? Yeah, I definitely believe so. Um, but I think that speaks for itself. That's why guys go off and get training for it, yeah. training for the 40. Um, but me, I feel like my game speed and my straight line speed is pretty much the same. Now, people don't know because of what I ran, sure. but I mean, you'll get a chance to see. How much press man did you play? That's all we did. That's all, That's all we did at University of Kansas. Eagles drafted what? three defensive backs. What kind of competition did you have initially when you went to college, and, and how do you feel about you know, facing that type of competition here? Uh, going in, it was competition right off the back for me because you know I made a switch. Going to sophomore year, never played corner before, so off rip, it was competition for me, and I knew it was going to be a challenge, but I'm actually a guy who I like challenges. I don't like nothing that's easy. I never had anything handed to me. I always had to earn it and improve myself. So going into a situation where I got competition here as well, I think that benefits me because you actually get the best out of me when I do have competition. If I know I don't have a competition, then sometimes I do tend to lax. So going into it knowing I got competition, you're going to get everything. In practice, were you purely corner or, or are you learning safety as well? Uh, t today it was mainly corner, but you know uh, I learned the whole defense and you know Coach Corey talked to us about uh, possibly you know doing safety and nickel. So I mean I played corner today. Tomorrow could be different. Who knows? I just try to learn the whole defense and just do it with the ax. Does your wide receiver background help you at corner? Definitely. Uh, that definitely helped me, especially make the transition as quick as I did, especially playing a deep ball, um, knowing how to find the ball when it's in the air, and, and just uh, reading routes, reading stems uh, coming off. And, and that's one of the reasons why I do like the press, because when I'm up there at press, once I turn it open, I kind of feel like I can turn it back into the receiver and can find the ball. Anything stand, anything stand out? First day or two that maybe you didn't expect when you first got here. Uh, you, know, you have idea what this might be like. But. I had an idea. I had an idea of kind of what it was like. Uh, this is one of the places where I took my official, so I kind of had an idea what it would be like. Uh, nothing really, nothing unexpected. But um, as far as working with Coach Corey, you could tell he's real big on technique, and and that's something that I need as far as being kind of a raw corner, some like, someone who can teach me those technique things. I learned I learned a lot, obviously from. Uh, my college coach Dave Campo, but now it's you know learning new things, learn how to do it the eagle way. In that vein, on technique, when you're lined up, you know, press against a, a receiver who a blazer, four two, four three, are you still trying to get your hands on him as much as you can, or do you? Yeah, most definitely. I don't care what he run. He can run a four one for all I care. I mean, I trust my speed, and I mean, you can't run if you if you can't move. So if I get my hands on him, he can't go nowhere. Well, if I get my hands on that's going to disrupt his speed. So that 4-2, go to a 4-4, 4-3. So, I mean, I don't care what he is, what he run. I'm getting up there and I'm challenging him. Is that your approach in yeah. your first day in the NFL? Yeah. I mean, that's my approach. Jackson across there. That's my approach. I mean, you can't play corner if you don't have that approach. I obviously wouldn't be in this position if I, you know, didn't attack things that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, like I said, I trust my speed, and, I, and I'm going to rely on my technique to go against guys like that that I know are just blazing fast. That's when my technique comes into play. Can you, are, can you already tell that the emphasis here is on winning within those first five yards and disrupting the wide receiver's time? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, Coach Corey, he real big on winning win and press. That's basically his model, winning press. And, I mean, like you said, talent 
you know, if if you got that if you got that technique, it's gonna beat that talent, you no know, regardless of how good that talent is. So, I mean, with with my technique, that would be the way I went and pressed within those five for those five yards. So, do you think you would miss the NFL if you had stayed with Jimmy? I do. That's just me being confident in myself. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I wouldn't, even if I knew I had no shot. I mean, I felt like I was. I felt like I was a good receiver, and you know, I mean, things happen, and you know, I go 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 with the flow. They do play some off coverage here too. Do you have experience with that? I mean, uh, will that be an adjustment? That's gonna be an adjustment. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I can't. It's just that I didn't play much. Mm -hmm. um, that's just the way we we scheme things at the University of Kansas. We had two good corners that they know they can play on the island, so that's what we did. But um, playing off is something that I'm going to have to get used to and I would actually like to get used to because I feel like with my receiver background, it'll kind of help me as far as reading the, mm -hmm. reading the uh, steps of the quarterback and getting my eyes to the receiver. How did you react to the switch when they, when they approached you initially? I mean, was there any reluctance? Yeah, definitely. At first, I wasn't, I wasn't too big on it, but you know, after thinking about it and, and seeing that that's what the team needed and would be best in the team, you know, I took it upon myself to go and make that switch. I didn't register freshman year, so I knew if it didn't work out, then I could always go back to receiver. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank you, Thank you Today I was at corner, but just like Corey said, I mean, I can be at safety tomorrow, nickel tomorrow, I mean, doesn't know. So, you know, I took it upon myself, I mean, and Coach Corey, he pushes us to know the whole defense. Uh, so, you know, so we all know, like, what's happening on the back end. Uh, I can be the front, uh, the backside corner, but I got to know what's happening on the safety on the backside, so. This was a day I'm sure you looked forward to for a long time. What was it like to actually be out there and look to be wearing Eagles colors? Uh, I mean, it felt great. Uh, it felt great to, you know, smell the grass again, the heat, uh, hear the whistles going, you know, the music playing. I mean, uh, it really did, you know, it really great to be back on the field instead of training for 40s and, and shuttles and, you know, all that stuff. So uh, being back on the field really brought my competitive spirit back. You know, this, this is a group here with, with these draft picks that you guys could make an immediate impact. You know, last year guys weren't expected to, but, you know, with you and, and Nelson, could be starters in week one here. Do you have to take that that approach that I have to do everything I can to make sure I'm in position to be a starter? I take the approach is, you know, I want to better myself. Uh, I can't say like, you know, I'm going to be a starter week one. I mean, that's definitely in the NFL. That's not how it works. You know, you got to earn your spot. You got to earn the respect. Uh, so, you know, just like a freshman coming in college, you know, uh, you know, you got to learn from the people ahead of you. I mean, that's the approach I'm going to take, you know, when we get to the, we get to, uh, you know, meet with the vets and everything uh, Monday. But as for right now, you know, it, I just want to better myself, uh, you know, have the mentality of, you know, just compete. I mean, if, I feel if you, if you compete, everything will fall in place. Did you, did you cover Nelson one-on-one -on -one <clears throat> in your college career? No, the game that we played him, I was actually moved back to safety. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't get a chance to cover him in college. But you got a pretty good look at him. What, what, what do you remember thinking? Uh, man, he's shifty. I mean, he's explosive, shifty. You know, I mean, you better break down when you come up to him because you're not going to dive at him. Expect to get him. So <laughs> yeah, he's a real explosive player. Were you guys lined up against him today at all? Like he was saying that you know he made you better, in, or you made him better. Oh yeah, I mean we had man, I had a lot of reps against him. Uh, man press too. So I mean, a couple of routes he got me, and a couple of breaks I got him. I mean, that just competing. You know, you know, we both got better today. Do you like that? I mean, is this a nice little theme for the for the summer? I mean, you probably will be on similar teams and matched up against each other a lot. And uh, you're both the first and second round pick here, so you kind of look forward to that kind of competition against him. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, I see him as a you know NFL pro type receiver. So uh, not knocking down any other receiver because I was really mainly against him today. So really going against him. Will, really gives me, a, I guess, like a little taste of, you know, what to expect from other teams. Did he, did he get you guys over the top at all uh, when he played at Utah? When SC played Utah, do you remember? No, no. He didn't get it, like, over the top ball. I mean, he caught, a, he caught a couple deep balls, but they weren't, like, behind me. But, I mean, he caught a, I remember a couple deep balls he caught. The, the Eagles have really struggled. No, <laughs> <we're> my fault. <laughs> The Eagles have really struggled, especially against the pass on defense the last few years. Do you feel like with the additions, with the draft picks and, and some of the additions in this offseason, that 
be one of the guys that can help make that a lot better? Uh, I mean, I do feel like that, you know. I mean, I mean they brought me in to help uh, the pass defense, but not just me, you know. Along, they brought Ja'Cory, uh, they brought uh, Evans, they brought, you know, Coach Unlin. You know, he's new to the program, too. I feel like, you know, with a mix of all of us and, you know, Byron Maxwell and a couple of old vets here, I mean, I feel like we can all make a difference in the past defense this year. In the past few years, this organization's had, had, had a hard time drafting corners, drafting safeties. Chip has said that. Are you aware of that history, and does that come with any any type of pressure being a second-round pick? Uh, actually, I really wasn't aware of that history. Uh, I, I really don't, you know, feel that pressure of, uh, you know, being, like, you're the guy, you got to make plays. I mean, uh, I feel like if I just, you know, stay competing, stay working on my technique, my craft, I mean, it will, it will all fall in place. So in the week that you've been drafted, you've been seven days, what have you talked to people about, about this city, about the football fans, about just playing in Philadelphia? Have you heard anything specific from anybody? Oh, you're asking me if, if I heard any. Yeah, I'm sure you talked to a lot of people about your new home playing here. What have you heard about Philly? And the... Really, people I talked to, I mean, didn't really have any connection with Philadelphia. I mean, Kind of my family, you know, first we go is Midwest. So really, it's really my first time on the East Coast and really any connection to the East Coast. But, you know, coming here on Saturday, I mean, I felt, you know, great welcome from the fans. I mean, I, I see the fan support and it's crazy here. <laughs> when you made that, um, that transition from safety to the, and wanting to play cornerback, were you surprised at how well you played it? And, and does that bode well for you trying to find a position with this team, whether it's with or, or playing cornerback? Uh, making that transition, I, uh, I wasn't, wasn't as surprised of how well I did. I was surprised of the uh, progress I made within one year of playing uh, cornerback, you know, starting from, I think it was the second half of spring ball to the end of the season. I, I was, you know, pretty proud of, you know, the, the way I progressed each and every week at corner, you know, I was feeling more comfortable. Uh, uh, you know, game really started to slow down, so I was really uh, proud of that. I think a lot about man press at Utah. Oh yeah, I mean. Do you guys do any zone though, or, or off? Coverage? I mean, we we only we only play off coverage as a pass situation. Uh, but probably like ninety five percent of the time is press. Of oh, the teams that doing? were interested in you, did you know of, of the opportunity here that that Eagles had had somewhat of an opening at a one cornerback spot, somewhat of an opening at one safety spot? Uh. I really wasn't aware of like that opportunity going through the draft process. I mean, you don't know who you're going to get picked by. Uh, I had, I feel like I had a couple strong interests from other teams too. Uh, so it wasn't like, all right, if I, uh, you know, the Eagles depth chart, I really got a chance to play because they don't have nobody. I mean, I, I was not focused on that. I was just really just wanting to get picked, <laughs> go somewhere. I think you were saying on NFL Network last week that when you first met Chip, I don't know if it was Senior Bowl or another meeting that he was kind of intimidating uh, during that meeting. Take, take <laughs> me back there and what that was like. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, walked into the room and there's about seven people. And I, I remember seeing Chip Kelly. And when they were really asking me questions, uh, he would just lean back in his chair, just writing down everything I said. And I was like, man, what is he writing? Am I saying something wrong? I mean, I mean he, he did even like budge a smile at me. I tried to crack a joke, it's nothing. I was like, man, this guy's tough. Like, <laughs> I mean, that was that was my first impression of him. Was, <laughs> was that at the dude? Senior Bowl? Yeah, the Senior Bowl. And then what was it like when you when you came here and first saw him in the building after you got drafted? Was he di different uh, reaction? Oh yeah, he was uh, excited, you know, happy, uh, cracking smile, joking with me. I was like, oh, that's a totally different guy, you know, than I first met. But uh, I mean, it, it was a pretty cool experience though. What was, was the uh, intention? What was the joke you cracked in the meeting? Do you know? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Did you like you were trying to uh, see what you were made of, or do you think you were really taking such I, I, so I, I don't know if it was intentional or – actually, I don't know what it was about. I thought it was just him. <laughs> you were brought in for pre-draft physics, though, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, so you had some experience with him meeting him here. And then uh, it, was, it was quick uh, because when I came in, the Eagles had a community service with building a playground right. up north. So I met him for like breakfast, for like 10 minutes, and he had to go uh, to, I, I don't know where they went actually, yeah. Yeah. but I know they were building a playground, right. but so he had to go. So who would you spend the bulk of your time with here then if he wasn't here? I was with Crowley uh, and really, you know, I was with Coach Unley for a little bit, uh, had lunch with him, but then, you know, he had to go to Coach Harp. Uh, 
But yeah, I, I guess I spend a bulk of my time with Coach Unlin. If somehow uh, you get to play at the safety position and whatnot, do you think that years playing cornerback has made you a better cover guy, especially having the possibility to go up against tight ends and people like that playing the slot? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, having a year of, uh, of coverage on the outside against you know shifty receivers, speedy receivers. I mean. Uh, I feel like, like in the senior bowl, I had to cover tight ends. I feel like, man, it was a lot slower for me, like, because I'm so used to seeing a whole bunch of moves coming at me and, uh, you know, explosive receivers. And when it comes to tight end, it's more, uh, you know, try to strength, try to push you around. And I feel like I, I'm pretty good with that. Are you expecting them to say, play corner or play safety? Or, or, or do you think you'll juggle between positions a little bit? I kind of expect them to tell me, you know, play play X, yeah. play corner, play safety. Uh, it will make it easier for me so I can, you know, focus on corner things to focus on rather than <laughs> safety. Uh, but if it happens a time in the season where they they need me, like, hey, we need to play safety, you know, my mindset will change. Uh, but it would be nice, you know, if they did tell me that. Last couple for Eric, guys. Is, is, you know, confidence is such a big part of your position. You're a rookie. I mean, are, are you equipped to deal with growing pains and, and be able to kind of endure through them? Uh, yeah, I mean, I went through those growing pains when I made the transition. I mean, it was tough, but I mean, I got through them. But uh, I know about the growing pains as a rookie, especially as the season goes on. So, I mean, I'm well equipped for that, too. Were most teams that were interested in you looking at you at corner or, or, or more than looking at you at safety? Uh, I'd say about 90% were at corner okay. and some were at safety. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Thanks.